about Mary Ellen. We call her Ellen. Um, she developed a new paradigm of learning in 1983, when nothing else would work to teach afraid adults to swim. She founded Miracle Swimming Institute in Berkeley, California. She wrote a book, Conquer Your Fear of Water, and produced a DVD, the Miracle Swimmer. These two, I'm sure you have them available. Can they order them on your website? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, where was I? <laughs> She's just awesome. What can I say? <laughs> She's trained 53 instructors worldwide so far in her system, which literally cannot fail. A swim instructor training manual is imminent. She resides in Sarasota, Florida, and is CEO of 21st Century Swimming Lessons Incorporated, a nonprofit organization created to end drowning worldwide by training instructors and in how to teach afraid adults to swim. It's my pleasure, and I'm so grateful that they asked me to introduce my friend, Melon Dash. Thank you. How many people in this room can swim? <clears throat> There are 109 million adults in the United States who are afraid in water. That's from a 1998 Gallup poll. I commissioned that poll. People have been quoting that quite a bit, and I'll tell you, it came from here, okay? Um, that means 109 million adults don't know what to do when they're in deep water. They're not reliable for their safety in deep water. If a child grows up in a household that happens to have a backyard pool and his parents or her parents are swimmers, that child is typically one who is brought into the pool by his parents at a young age and helps to be familiar with the water by his parents. He may be held, he'll just be held in the water and feel the temperature of pool, or feel pool temperature water against his skin and see what that's like. And feel the pressure of water against his body, which is different from the pressure of the air against his body. Find out what that's like. And after a little while, mom might draw, draw him through the water and his face goes in, or his ears might get wet, or his hair gets wet. And he has these beginning understandings of what it's like to be familiar with how the water feels on his body. And then a year later, let's say, mom and dad are standing apart in the pool, and uh, mom will push Johnny over to dad, and dad will push him back to mom. And he gets the feeling that, oh, he's not thinking this, of course, but he's feeling, oh, this is safe. No need to be afraid here. Later, he can sit on the step and pick up a toy from the step. And after that, maybe if the toy is put on the next step lower, he can go underwater and open his eyes and see that it's, he can see underwater. And maybe later, a, a year or two later, he jumps off the deck and comes down and comes back up and dad catches him. And all this time, he's learning how the water works. Soon, he is able to swim from mom to dad, just push off mom's lap and swim to dad, and come up and get a breath without ever having been taught. And even, rest on his back. Maybe he'll get vertical and just be back here like this doing something that might look like a scramble, but it doesn't matter because he feels in control and he can get air when he needs it. He can rest. Then mom goes to daycare and drops him off and happens to say, Johnny can swim. I mean, he can't swim, but he can swim. And we all know what she means, right? We know that she is saying Johnny doesn't know strokes, but he knows how to take care of himself and water over his head. He can rest when he needs to, and he can get air. He's independent. Not that we would leave him in the pool by himself, but you don't have to carry him around anymore. Okay? Johnny is learning to swim. Johnny may have already learned to swim. And there are those two definitions in this country, and we have exported these definitions around the world, of what learning to swim means. 
learning strokes, or learning to be safe in deep water. Okay? If someone comes to your facility, an adult who's afraid in water, and says, I want to learn to swim, which definition do you use to teach them? And which definition are they thinking? Do you discuss it? Jim Montgomery, who is, um, he was the Olympic gold medalist in the 100 free in the 76 Olympics. He has a master's team in Dallas. When people want to join his team, they, he asks them if they can swim. And they say yes. He, they come to the pool, they push off the wall, they start swimming, and they are doing everything they can. They get 15 or 20 yards down the pool, and they have not taken one breath. They're exhausted, and they pull over to the side because they are afraid now that they're in the deep water. Now, did these people say, were they lying to Jim when they told him they could swim? No. They thought that's what knowing how to swim meant. If you think you know how to swim, and that's all you can do, that's a really dangerous situation. And a lot of people are in that situation. This is the cause of a lot of drownings around the world today. People who think they can swim who can't. Drowning is getting water in your lungs so that water gets in the way of air going from your lungs to your blood. Preventing drowning means keeping water out of the lungs, keeping your air way open, keeping your mouth above the water, your nose above the water. Those are the things that have to happen in order for someone to learn how to swim. They have to know how to do that and be reliable for that. They know, okay, I don't have to worry about that. I know I can always come to the surface if I need to. I know I can always um, turn over on my back if I'm on my stomach. I'm in control of getting air. That's what Johnny learned. That's what adults need to learn. I have been trained by 5,000 adults who failed swimming lessons. They took swimming lessons often more than once, and they never made it through. The reason they didn't make it through is because their teachers tried to teach them what to do with their arms and legs before ever teaching them how the water works, how to keep water out of their nose, that it's OK to have your face in the water, that it's OK to have your ears full of water, that it's OK to be underwater, that it's OK to sink. That, it's, that the water holds you up, most people. That if it doesn't hold you up, it's not an emergency. You can still be completely in control. These are the things that we need to teach to adults who are afraid in water. They're everywhere. There's 109 million of them. You have all seen them. How many people are aquatics directors? Let's say aquatics directors for right now. Great. And how many are swimming instructors? Beautiful. OK. <clears throat> this is information you can take straight back to your pool. All right, you've got somebody coming into the pool, um, into your facility. They have overcome their fear of saying they're afraid, right? They're embarrassed and ashamed that they're afraid in water, and they're finally going to do something about it. And they want to know that when they ask you to help them, you're going to give them relevant information. Of what value is flutter kick to somebody who's afraid in water? Of what value is push and glide to someone who's afraid in water? How about freestyle? If you start talking about those things, they just glaze over. They try to be respectful. They try to do what you're saying. But in the back of their mind, they're saying, this isn't what I need. I don't even like putting my face in. I'm afraid I'm going to inhale water when I put my face in. And they will. I'm afraid I'm going to sink before I get across the pool. All these things you will know if you get in touch with your heart. You're looking at some gorgeous person. No matter how they look, they're gorgeous because they have said, help. And they've come to you and they said, here's my money. I am putting my trust in you to tell me what I need to know because after all these years, I want to do something about my fear. So you, being a good person, you look them in the eye and you say, wow, what happened? And you start establishing a connection with them so that they know you're listening. And they say, I was five 
and my brother held me underwater, who he thought it was funny, and I couldn't get up because he was bigger than me, and I was down there too long and I freaked out, and I've been afraid ever since. Or any of the 5,000, literally, stories that I have heard. Some of them came from what swimming instructors did in classes. And you'll find out, oh, this person has a good reason for being afraid. Now, there are some people who had the same thing happen to them, and they did not come away afraid. Good for them. This person did. We need to have a program for every person who had something happen that they are still living with. And there are programs like that. Okay? And I want to say, please, become trained in one of those programs so that you keep your connection with each of these students and bring them through the steps so that they become free in water and safe. Because when they are, they'll start bringing their kids to your swimming lessons, and then they'll start bringing themselves back to the higher level programs that you offer at your pool. There is a new way of seeing, okay? This is what you get in class every day, all day, when you use this new way of seeing. The logo, the mascot, the symbol of our instructor training is a pair of yellow glasses that cyclists use when they're cycling at dawn and dusk. If you've ever used yellow glasses, they make everything very clear and very bright. When you, as a swimming instructor, wear yellow glasses, you suddenly see people in a new way. Oh, wow, what they just did was so stiff. I can't tell them to do something that comes after that, because they are troubled by what I've just given them. Back up 10 steps. Let's go back to something that they can be really comfortable with. Okay? A new way of seeing. We're not looking for proper movements of hands. We're looking for tension. We're looking for ease. We're looking for smiles. When we say, how was that? And they say, OK. You have to look askance at that. OK? If we want to hear, it was great, or that felt good. OK? You're looking in a new way. You're looking for, wow, have you ever done that before? And if you don't get that, go back a couple steps and make sure you didn't skip anything. OK? You have, how many people have had adults who are afraid in water in your classes? Not 100%? Some people only teach kids? How many people only teach kids? Okay, how many people haven't had adults who are afraid in water in their classes? Okay, so everybody has. Great. Now here's the scary part. <laughs> Is it okay with you to say, yeah, I've been stuck. I haven't known what to do with my people who are afraid. I might have told them the wrong thing. This is what I do with my people who are afraid. I know that's probably not what you would want me to do, but let's talk about it so at least I can find out. And I want to talk about this if you feel safe doing it, because I would like to have all of us have a breakthrough in understanding how to work with people who are afraid today that you can take home tomorrow